Hey guys, this is Write It Out. I'm A.R. Kaufman. Today we're going to go over uh, creating your unforgettable characters. And what we're going to do is use the five points of consideration. Now, what I mean by five points of consideration is the five areas you need to pay the most attention to because they could make or break your character. Um, not just the easy stuff like you know, color of this, height of that, uh, buff, skinny, and all that bullshit. This is the actual points of consideration that will allow your character to develop into something authentic, uh, something creative, something unique, while being relatable. So uh, let's go ahead and just dive right into it. So the first one of your five points of consideration would be, I call it, I call it the human resources. Now this kind of covers your basic information that you need to know. Uh, a good thing to do is give your characters a major in-depth background in the style of um, bullet points in that form. <clears throat> I say that because it's very easy to refer to, very easy citable, and very quick referenced. Um, a lot of authors will disagree with me on this, and though it's not the most common of practices, it's something I use, and it's something that's done me very well. Um, this helps you keep track of information given, information gathered, and information developed. Even if you decide to not reveal all the information that you've used to build this bullet points of character information, you can still keep that on hand as your character develops to kind of use it as, you know, once again, your reference points um, while your character interacts, while your character grows, so that way you keep track of your difference. It's very easy to work on a project, work on a character, take some time off of it, which is very very you know recommended especially when you hit writer's block take some time off but when you come back you may lose sense of that character may lose uh, that little channel you had with them <clears throat> so this kind of helps you keep it um, what this would cover besides you know just the basic height hair weights it also covers stuff like make sure that when you name your character uh, a few good points of naming the character would be to keep it within the era a period era or period of um, when your character or when your story is taking place for example if you have a character from 200 BC he's not he, you know he's not going to be named Terrence or Chuck that, that shit's just not going to work it's going to draw away from the authenticity it's going to draw away from the depth of that character and it's going to draw away from your readers being able to believe the story get lost in it so try to maintain that the only time you should really stray off of that is if it's on purpose if it's methodical if it was well thought out so you know it's really your guys' call but that's just it's helpful so um make the name also fit the personality of the character if you have a crew guy give him kind of a salt of the earth kind of name uh, a very good example of this would be the Ninja Turtles. You know, if you kind of listen to their name, you kind of, without knowing who they were, which I'm sure everyone knows who they are, without knowing exactly who they were, you could kind of tell who played what sense within the group. Like you had uh, Donatello, Leonardo, Michelangelo, Raphael. Um, you know, Raphael, his name is a lot grittier, a lot gruntier. Uh, it kind of carries more of a, you know, I would stab you in the face if need be and that's why he's always moody and walking around with his fedora um, Michelangelo you know it's more of a playful whimsical name more fun more light and the character also fit that bill you know cowabunga dude and shit so that's a, a good thing to keep in mind is naming it can make or break it it's a very big dynamic another dynamic you kind of need to pay attention to would be your sense of family dynamic if the character had a very rough upbringing, it should show in particular situations and in certain ways the character is going to interact, you know, with other characters. So, mind you, that each character should be their own distinct person. So, starting off with a human resources type chart kind of helps. Uh, give them where they're from, where they're all that, you know, all that bullshit. That definitely does help. It definitely gives you, the author, the sense of who they are, where they're going, 
you know, and where you want them to go and kind of allows you to maintain that sense throughout the development of the story. Um, another big, very, very big influencing factor would be your social status. This is very overlooked. And I mean very overlooked means people just don't pay attention to it. When your social status is kind of brought in, especially from childhood, the young tender ages where you're developing your own human, you know, human characteristics, your own traits, your own, uh, you know, quirks and pet peeves and all that bullshit, your social status will directly alter that. So if you come from a very high class, very, um, well-funded family, you're not going to want to jump in and make a ramen noodle sandwich. You're not going to, you're not going to go making a slam, you know, with your ramen noodles and your fucking spicy sausage you're not gonna do that stuff so you're gonna kind of maintain that sense of channel from where you came from you know um prime example i come from a middle class family stand out in new york and if you look at me next to a few of my associates that have come with a lot more of a financial room you could kind of tell the difference i'm tattooed everywhere you know i'd ride a motorcycle, I curse a fucking lot, uh, they're very proper, prim, very good people, nothing against them, but, uh, you could just, dip, you know, you could differentiate, you could definitely tell the difference, put that divider there, and define it, um, <clears throat> a good thing to do is also detail the character's occupation and their skill level within that occupation, uh, most storylines are driven by a sense of skill, a sense of purpose, and if you follow any movie, any book, Nine times out of ten, that character has that skill, that purpose, somewhere within them to accomplish that mission, reach that goal, defeat that whoever, you know, break or beat or burn or kill or fuck or do all that stuff. You know, they have that in them. They have that in their nature. So, uh, underline that for yourself. If it serves a purpose, put it inside the storyline. Uh, another good one is... A character having a specific or unique talents, this also drives in what I just said before. That's kind of a cool thing to have, um, uh, playing ping pong, you know, that's a unique talent, I guess. Uh, you know, boxing, all that stuff, unique talents that could actually help give another sense, another layer of grit to that character, not something for the reader to hold on to, something for the reader to attach to. And something for the reader to relate to, which is the ultimate goal of a writer is to let allow the reader to escape themselves, get lost in what we create while holding their own sense of self. You know, give them enough room to create their own version of what you gave them and kind of defining your character puts the parameters in play to where no one kind of gets lost and there's no strays. <clears throat> Excuse me. When creating your characters, and it gets fun thinking of the good versus evil, hero versus nemesis, that's super fun. But don't get caught in the meta human trait trap. All right? You don't want your hero to be undefeatable. Never go through that that spill. Never go through that, that break of storyline where just everything's not working. He's getting his ass whipped. Don't make a guy who's untouchable. Uh, we've I've read books I've I've read books like that. My editors read books like that. My my talent team they read books like that. It never turns out well. It's not fun. It gets drawn on. It's it's literally like watching somebody pull Velcro, which can be satisfying at first, but after a while it kind of just gets annoying. You want that overcome obstacle story. You want that. Every reader wants that, even though they may not admit it. You need the downplay. You need that, you need that spiral down. <clears throat> uh, defining a religious belief for a character, though, it may not be necessary unless the storyline really requires it. Uh, however, to counteract that, and, but first, let me clarify this. I don't mean to make a non-religious character. That is not what I mean by any sense. What I do mean is you don't want to jump in that line of making a religiously driven book if your storyline does not call for it. If uh, Superman 
you know, was saving Lois Lane, and out of nowhere, he's like, hey, by the way, I'm Catholic. Uh, it may lose a reader. It may cause conflict. You just avoid that unless it's absolutely necessary. But um, on the other side of that, you do want to set a sense or a form of awareness regarding the character's perception of morality. And that means what boundaries he will set, he will cross. Um, if he has to, you know, if the, if the reader should know if there was a bullet in front of him and he had to put it through somebody he loved, would he do it? Would he not do it? You want the reader to kind of feel like they know the guy already to make that predetermination of whether or not he would do it. So that way, if the character does do it, well, now reader's shocked, reader's surprised, reader's hooked. So uh, it's good things to keep in mind. Explain the differences in like uh, personality limitations for characters of the same likeness. And uh, what I mean by that would be like, if you have soldiers that hold the same sense of morality, hold the same boundaries of morality and, and rules and regulations and won't violate it, and there's a group of them, uh, soldiers, cops, you know, criminals, stuff, you know, stuff of that nature, there's people of, of similar interests, remind yourself, remind your readers that they are not the same person, even though that they may, you know, share the same values, virtues, morality, there's always wiggle room, something different, which could help branch out into a sub story, a little side, little side work, just to kind of keep the reader interested. Um, so that's just a, a little little tidbit into that. Don't make carbon copy characters. That shit is just boring, and it's honestly it's just lazy. It's stupid. Um, after you get your basic, you know, I call it the HR work. Once you get your human resources stuff down. Um, and that's the age. Make sure you have your age identified, your height, weight, hair, you know, eyes. Uh, that's all your physical traits, right? That's what we're going to jump into next. But uh, just make sure your character knows that your your character, just make sure your readers know your character has a backstory and it is important. If it was important enough for you to write the book, it's important enough for you to, to define and identify each character as separate people. At the end of the day, they are making your book. They'll make your sales. So, uh, number two, the second point of consideration would be your sight for sore eyes, the, the way he looks, he or she looks to the reader. Uh, this is descriptive wordplay. Don't get over descriptive. Don't be too under descriptive. Play with it just enough to where the reader can visualize this person and then add to it if they would like to. Don't take away too much from them. Don't give them too much. You know what I mean? So, you know, you want to get your basics, your hair, eyes, build, um, stuff like that, scars, tattoos, etc. Always put very, you know, physical sightlies, you know, sight for sore eyes, things like uh, scars, tattoos. If they play a role, make sure they're identified uh, and make sure you do it faster than seeming like you just threw that shit in at the last second. So uh, make sure you have a structure to when you identify their traits and their, their visuals. Uh, keep in mind that there are visual things that could hinder a physical attribute of your character. For example, if your character is five foot two, weighs a buck twenty, uh, he's not going to be fighting on you know, Andre the Giant and winning. He's not going to be lifting boulders at all unless he is a superhero, and then that's awesome. I can live with that, but. You know, keep trying to keep it within the bounds of reality. Going too far out, and I'm, I'm not talking about sci-fi now. That sci-fi, you guys, you know, fuck reality. You guys go to wherever bound you want to. Get creative. Go, you know, go crazy. Have fun. There's other videos we'll be doing about that, and other um, uh, podcasts we'll be doing about that. But for those just basic fiction, good storylines, good content, try to keep it believable. The more uh, coinciding facts you place into your book the more factual and authentic it does become. So, and keep them consistent. Please keep them consistent. Don't start veering off and, uh, you know, guy has brown hair. Three chapters later, he has blonde hair. Two chapters later, he's blind with an eagle. Don't do that. So, your physical has to be on point. If you ever have issues describing a character, now if you can't figure out the right words to use, uh, a good exercise that I used was I will pull up a picture of either myself or uh, some celebrity or you know just whoever, it doesn't really matter, 
and instead of writing it down, record yourself verbally.